Welcome back to The Neighborhood. I'm Dylan, and today I'm going to be talking about the things I'm excited for after playing the Monster Hunter Wilds beta. I'm a huge Monster Hunter fan. I got my start with Monster Hunter World, played so much of that game the year it came out, enjoyed the Iceborne expansion that came with that a lot, uh, and I played a lot of Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Sunbreak as well. Uh, I even went back and played some of the older games on my Switch and on my 2DS. So uh, I am looking very forward to Monster Hunter Wilds. Um, and so this past weekend, uh, we got to play a taste of Monster Hunter Wilds as they did their network test beta. So in no particular order, I'm going to talk about some of the things that I am coming away from super excited for uh, and looking forward to for when I actually get my hands on Monster Hunter Wilds in February. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the Wilds. It feels like a big upgrade from Monster Hunter World. So in the beta, we got to explore one zone, the Windward Plains, and it feels huge compared to the zones from Monster Hunter World and Rise. You get this little like raptor lizard thing called a secret that you get to ride around, um, and it's definitely needed because trying to go on foot across these zones uh, would take forever. You can hop on it and just kind of let it take you to whatever the waypoint is or whatever the monster is, or you can take control of it and kind of run around, collect things from the environment. It reminds me of the dog-like wyvern things that you could hop on in Monster Hunter Rise and Sunbreak that would let you kind of move around that environment a whole lot faster, but like taken to the next level for sure. The world felt very beautiful. It felt very dynamic. So all throughout there were monsters kind of like coming and going out of the environment. It was constantly kind of shifting and changing. So like events would happen besides just the monsters going in and out. Some of the events that would happen were pretty basic and simple. Like it would be a an increase in the number of bugs around. So if you were trying to go around and, you know, collect items so that you could do some of the item crafting stuff back in camp. Maybe you would go out when there were more bugs so that you could collect more of them or something like that. Um, but there was also like big stuff that would happen, like a huge lightning storm that would sort of roll through. And so the world, it reminded me a lot of the, the guiding lands from Monster Hunter Iceborne. It was kind of like a zone where they constantly had shifting monsters coming in and out and you could kind of just go in there and wander around, but in a much more like beefed up, fleshed out way. Um, and, you know, this was one zone. I assume all of the zones will be very similar to this once the actual game comes out. The camp is integrated into the map. So it feels way more seamless. There's way less loading that you've got to deal with. So you kind of just start in your, you know, hub and get to do your prep. Um, in the beta, uh, they were still like setting up the camp, at, like at that part in the story. But I assume there will be, you know, the ability to do like your blacksmithing and purchase items and have them like cook meals and that sort of thing for you but you could still do some of that in like your little temporary tent that was set up in the camp as well but you start there and then you can kind of just walk right out into the zone um, and so it wasn't there was no loading screen and you can also set up other temporary camps or sort of mini camps in four different spots uh, at least in the beta. And so there were a bunch of different spots that you could pick from, uh, but you could only set up like four on the map. Uh, and so those would serve as like if you got knocked out or you wanted to head back and like restock or change weapons or items or something like that, you could do that at one of these camps that you could place down in specific zones in the, in the map. Some of them were like very safe. Others were much more dangerous where the monsters might find them and destroy them and they would have to be 
kind of rebuilt by um, some of the feline companions that were going around. Um, and so that was on like a timer. So um, it was kind of like a risk reward sort of thing where it's like, okay, this one's a lot more convenient to where I'm going to be fighting this monster, but the monsters might find it and destroy it. And then I don't have a nearby spawn point or fast travel point. Overall, um, I was just super pumped. Something that I love about these Monster Hunter games is just the world and the detail that they put into the environment and just all of the sort of herds of the, the smaller monsters that weren't the four big ones you could hunt in this game felt dynamic, felt living, and the shifting of the environments I thought was super cool as well. The next part uh, was the, the hunting part of Monster Hunter. Um, so Monster Hunter is essentially a boss battler, uh, and so we got to try out four of the, the bosses, four of the monsters in this, this beta. Um, so the first one was the Chattacabra, uh, which was kind of like a big gorilla frog monster thing. The second was a Doshaguma, which was kind of like an angry bantha from Star Wars. The third was a Balahara, which felt to me kind of like a tiny sandworm that spits oil. Uh, and then the final one was a Ray Dao, uh, which was the big sort of lightning apex predator, sort of dragon wyvern thing that you could fight uh, in the zone. So I loved the designs and the sounds that all of these creatures made and uh, their, their musical themes that went along with them. Uh, they didn't have the Ray Dao like armor you can't you couldn't craft armor or weapons in in the beta uh, so i didn't get a chance to see what that one looked like but i did get a chance to see what the armor for the other three monsters looked like and it to me looked super cool it, i it had a little bit more of this sort of weird over the top style that monster hunter rise had had um but with also like keeping it real a little bit more grounded a little bit more realistic kind of like world so i felt like it it found a nice middle ground there. So they added some variety. Uh, you know, a lot of the previous games, it had just kind of been like, you know, big boss battler, which I really enjoyed. Um, but this one felt like it added variety. So for example, the Doshaguma, it shows up in like a herd and there's one of them that's the alpha. And so you have to decide if you're gonna try to drive the other ones away uh, so that you can just focus on the alpha or if you're going to have to kind of try to fight all three of them at once. And so I thought that was kind of a neat concept. Um, and then the Ray Dao in the beta um, showed up during those like big map wide lightning storms um, and had some like crazy lightning railgun type attacks that you had to kind of like run away from. And so you had to pay a little bit more attention to what was going on. Um, and so I thought that was a lot of fun. And it wasn't just kind of a like hack and slash beat em up sort of thing. Like there is some variety there, which I appreciated. They added like a wound system. So if you attack the same part of a monster, eventually it gets wounded. When it's wounded, you can attack that part still. Um, and it does like some bonus damage. Um, and eventually you'll destroy that wound and get a little bit more of a like a dan damage bonus or, or a stagger for the monster or you can use the new focus mode which lets you kind of more finely tune your targeting and do a focus attack which if it hits one of the wounded parts instantly destroys it for a big damage boost um, and has a pretty high chance of staggering the monster that seemed really cool it seemed like a way to kind of help the the fights keep flowing and feel dynamic it seemed like an evolution on some of the ideas of things that they added in like Monster Hunter World and Iceborne um, that became like you just felt like you were doing the same thing to all of the monsters in that. Whereas this, it feels a lot more interesting, a lot more dynamic because it feels like a more natural part of the fight versus like, OK, now I've got to use my claw to grapple to the monster and then create a wound, which does bonus damage. And then we only attack that part. So uh, they changed a lot of the weapons. Um, I, I didn't get a chance to try them all yet, um, but I did try out all the ones that like I play a lot of when I play these games. 
Um, so I tried out the charge blade, the switch axe, the long sword, and the insect glaive. And so all of those weapons had new options. For the most part, I would say they all felt smoother to play and like you had more choice to to do different moves as you were playing. Uh, you know, I had to adjust a little bit and learn some of the new moves and try to figure out like, okay, what am I doing? And how do I incorporate some of these new moves in? But there was a lot of cool stuff that seemed like iterations on a lot of what the weapons could already do, um, but in cool new ways. So like the charge blade was always able to sort of block attacks. Now there's the ability to sort of like do a big counter attack. Uh, same with the switch axe where you can do sort of this big counter attack and like amp up your damage uh, and then continue to attack uh, the monster uh, maybe kind of knocking it to the ground and giving you a big damage window or something like that. I think overall, uh, the hunting is going to be a lot of fun, which, you know, obviously it's Monster Hunter. Uh, they could have not changed anything and I still would have thought it was pretty fun, but it's cool to see them like iterating and pushing this forward and not just kind of releasing the same game over and over again. I'm also, uh, excited for the story. Uh, I mean, it's, a monster hunter story so it's not like it's gonna be like this super in-depth deep story but it seems like it's still going to be ridiculous in a fun way the crew that you're out there exploring the forbidden lands with seems like a lot of fun uh, they seem like they have big personalities and so i'm excited to kind of see how that plays out uh, the character that you make also has like a, a voice and a part in the story uh, I don't remember in previous games your character ever like speaking or being like a part of the cutscenes and that sort of thing. But in this game, your character is, you know, like taking active part in the story, which I thought was really cool. Your feline companion also speaks now, uh, which is a little jarring at first, but I, I thought it was fun because it, it's just kind of like a goofy over the top thing. Um, and then it, like just in general, that's what these games, I feel like their stories are, is a fun, like over the top anime story that's taking itself super seriously. Uh, but I, I personally find that to be part of the, the charm about these games. So those are three of the biggest things that I'm excited for as I am impatiently waiting for this game to come out in February. Um, did you guys get a chance to check out the beta? If you did, what are some of the things that you're looking forward to the most? Let us know down in the comments. If you like this video, uh, consider leaving us a like, maybe subscribing to the channel so that you can get notified when new videos go live. Uh, if you want to hear us talk way more in depth about the video games that we are playing and other gaming related topics, uh, go ahead and check out our podcast, Your Friendly Neighborhood Gamers, wherever you get your podcasts. And with that, I'll leave you with a reminder to stay friendly, gamers.